obesity is a risk factor for heart disease, in part because just being overweight uh, causes problems for your heart. But also, the reason that people are overweight is often that they're eating a lot of foods that are high in refined carbohydrates and high in fat, particularly saturated fat. And so the same kind of dietary changes that clog up your arteries also cause you to gain weight. And when you gain weight, you're more likely to get what's called insulin resistance. Your body starts to make all this insulin to deal with these wide swings in blood sugar. And over time, it's a little like the boy who cried wolf. It's like your insulin receptors go, oh, not more insulin. So your body's making more and more insulin to get the same effect to lower your blood sugar. And the insulin accelerates not only the conversion of calories into fat, but also promotes inflammation. And inflammation is an underlying irritant of the lining of the arteries that tends to cause the blockages to form. So it's a, it's a web of interactions that can be reversed if you simply start to deal with the cause, which is, to a large degree, are the, the diet and lifestyle choices that we make every day. What we eat, how we respond to stress, whether or not we smoke, how much exercise we get, and perhaps most important, how much love and support we have in our lives are all factors that can actually stop or even reverse the progression of even severe heart disease. And one of the most exciting findings in all of our studies that really surprised me was that it wasn't how old or how sick people were. The more people change their diet and lifestyle, the more they improved, both in how they felt, and when you feel better, you want to keep doing it, because feeling good is ultimately what's sustainable, but also in every objective metric we looked at. How much blockage in the arteries. The more people change, the more their blockage is improved. I've been a veteran of many diet debates and so on, but there's a, a real convergence of what constitutes a healthy way of eating and living. And it's really eating as close as possible to food in its natural, unrefined form. You know, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, soy products are rich in fiber. The fiber slows the absorption so you don't get those rapid peaks and valleys in your blood sugar. It gives you a much more constant level of energy. So if you go from whole wheat flour to white flour, or from brown rice to white rice, you're removing the fiber, and so your body absorbs the food very quickly, so your blood sugar spikes, your pancreas makes insulin to bring it back down, which is good, but it usually goes down below where it started, like a pendulum, if you pull it to one side, it doesn't stop in the middle, it goes to the other, so your blood sugar gets too low, you get a craving for more carbohydrate and a vicious cycle. But also, these insulin surges accelerate the conversion of calories into fat, so you get a double whammy. But if you eat whole grains in their natural forms, you don't need to go to pork rinds and bacon and sausage like the low carb people would say. You want to avoid the refined carbs, they're right about that. But you want to eat the good carbs, the fruits and vegetables and unrefined foods, whole, whole wheat flour, brown rice are rich in fiber. The fiber fills you up before you get too many calories. You can consume virtually unlimited amounts of sugar without getting full, but you can only eat so many apples, you're going to get full before you get too many calories. The type of fat is also important from your heart standpoint. Saturated fats and trans fats in particular irritate the lining of the artery and, perform, and form a substrate for the blockages that can build up there. So the amount of fat and the type of fat are both important. The best fats are what are called the omega-3 fatty acids, which were found in the fattiest fish like salmon and mackerel and halibut. But they're also found that you can get plankton-based omega-3s because actually the, the fish that have the omega-3s get them from eating the plankton. And so there are companies that sell those as well. In some ways, it's actually better to get them from the supplements than from the fish themselves because there are no clean fish. All fish have toxicities. You know, they have dioxin and PCBs and mercury and things like that, which can be removed in the supplements. So if you just take four grams a day of fish oil or flaxseed oil or the plankton-based uh, omega-3s, they can reduce your risk of sudden cardiac death by up to 80%. They can, if you're taking them while you're a nursing mother or you're growing a baby inside you, they can raise your child's IQ by seven to 10 points, which is huge. They can reduce your risk of prostate and breast cancer. So these simple choices can really make a powerful difference in, in our lives and in our kids' lives as well. Well, 35 years ago when I began doing this research, these ideas were thought crazy because everything we've done since then was thought impossible at the time. So the idea that you could reverse heart disease was thought a crazy idea, and then we proved in a series of randomized trials using state-of-the-art measures that it could be. 
And then it was like, okay, well, your patients did it, but you know, you live in California, it's an altered state, no one else can do this. And so we began through our nonprofit institute training hospitals around the country, we've trained already, already over 50 of them. And we've shown bigger changes in diet and lifestyle, better clinical outcomes, even larger cost savings than anyone's ever shown before. Mutual of Omaha found they saved almost $30,000 per patient in the first year. Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield found they cut their overall healthcare costs by 50% in the first year and by an additional 20 to 30% in subsequent years. And because of that, this year, Medicare began covering our program in hospitals and clinics and doctor's offices that we train. So we can really make this a standard of care because if it's reimbursable, then it's sustainable. And if Medicare covers it, most of the other insurance companies are doing it as well. So then it can become available to the people who most need it.